Hi again, whiskey lovers. Big Al here, and welcome to Whiskey Street. Today, I'm staying with the Irish whiskey theme, but unlike the last time when I was at the lower end of the scale with the Paddy Irish whiskey, today I'm right up at the other end of the spectrum with this little beauty here, the Red Breast 12 cask strength. And this has been a recently released second batch, and I've been really looking forward to give it a try because the first batch that I tried several times literally just blew me away. And I'll give you a little spoiler alert, right this early on, it does not disappoint. Now at this stage of my videos, most of you know that I like to give a wee bit of background about the history uh, of the whiskey I'm reviewing, but I'm not really going to do it this time. I'll just skim over the top of it and give you a brief synopsis because I really do want to just get right into the whiskey here. Redbreast was first mentioned as a brand in 1912, and that was by the W and A Gilby Company, who produced a 12-year-old expression as their premium core whiskey. Now that whiskey continued for many years, and then it started to dwindle a bit. And in 1985, the brand name was acquired by Irish Distillers. Now, thankfully. The guys at Irish Distillers, they had plans for the future and they were beavering away behind the scenes. And thankfully in 1991, Redbreast was relaunched with the core expression, the 12 year old, and that was to much and widely deserved worldwide acclaim. Throughout the years since then, other expressions have followed the 15 and the 21, obviously, as, as well as the cask strength here, 12 year old and more recently, the Lestau. If you want to know a bit more about the heritage of things and how the whiskey is produced, I'll throw a link in up here so that you can look up the Redbreast website and there's a load of information on there and it really is well worth reading. So what exactly is Redbreast 12 cask strength? Well, coming from the cask, it is viewed as Redbreast in its purest form because it comes straight from the cask and this particular batch two has been bottled at 55.8%, giving it just that little bit more oomph than a batch one. Now, it's made from a mash of malted and unmalted barley, which is then triple distilled in copper pot stills before being matured in a combination of bourbon seasoned American oak barrels and then Oloroso sherry seasoned oak butts. But, <coughs> The proof of the pudding, as I say, is in the eating. The proof of the whiskey is in the drinking. So let's get on with it and see just how good the result of this whiskey in its purest form is. Slancha. Now we'll start off with the nose. Right off there, I'm getting dried fruits. And it's like a dried fruits soaked in sherry. But immediately when you're getting those aromas, you can sense that there's a real richness and depth in here. Now, uh, that richness is following through with some apricot and sultanas. Um, what's particularly nice, probably this time of year, in the lead up to Christmas, there really is that uh, sense of a richly spirited Christmas cake. The more spirit they are, the better, obviously. Hey, this is this is a whiskey that just keeps on giving. I'm getting some red fruits in there as well, which adds a wee bit of sweetness. And then along with that, there's there's like stewed apples, eh, which is gives a nice rich nose. And then there's a sprinkling of vanilla and some toasted ugliness in there as well. It really is quite the aromatic experience and it, it does give you a sense of even what the whiskey is going to be like uh, when you taste it. So well, let's move on to the tasting. Whoa, that's all you can say immediately. This has that wow factor. It's, it's rich, there's spicy fruits and that spiciness, the intensity, it's gradually increasing across the palate. But while it does have quite a kick, 
It's not overpowering in any way. It really does spread entirely across the palate. And as it sort of mellows down, as the, the intensity of the heat decreases, then you get an increase in the actual flavours flowing over the palate. And that initial sweetness of the fruits is now more dark in nature. There's like dark fruits in there, there's toasted oak and even there's a wee touch of char coming in there on the back end as well. Very impressive start. Let's go for the second set. This is just so good. So, so good. The second sip even brings out much more flavour. There's just a lovely array of flavours in there. It really does blend all well together. It's like there's vanilla, there's oak, it's toasty, there's dried fruits, there's sultanas, and they're all there. There's still that bit of spiciness, but obviously not as intense as in the first sip. But there's no big flavour fighting to be above the others. It's all nice and complimentary and it all works so very, very well together. It's just, it's just wonderful. And boy, does it linger. It just encases your mouth with all those flavours. As I said, they all complement each other. There's the, the light and the dark. There's the nice sweetness, but there's also that darker edge with a bit of char and the toasted oiliness and then the vanilla. It's just really, really lovely. And the great thing about this is because it lingers, that ensures that you can savour each sip long after you've swallowed the liquid. It's just, it's just a fantastic pour. So overall, this is just a wonderfully fantastic whiskey. You've probably guessed that it's right up there among my favourites, if not my favourite. And it's whiskey, how whiskey should be. And if you ask me right now, if there was any whiskey that I could put above this, I don't really think there is. You may well have won, but for me, this is this is pretty much as good as it gets. And when you take into account, this is going to set you back 80 quid. It's quite a lot of money, but for what you're getting, it's really not. It's money well spent, and it really is one that you can savour over and over again. And I was going to say there, you could, you could use this as a whiskey for a special occasion, but no, that's not right. And let me tell you why. Having a bottle of Redbreast 12 cast strength is celebration enough. The whiskey itself is a special occasion. So if you're lucky enough to get one, don't wait to Christmas Day or a birthday or something like that to open it. Once you get it into the house, open it up, savour it, because you will not be disappointed. So if you haven't got a bottle, go out and get one. Simple as. So anyway, thanks again folks for watching, really appreciate your support and uh, don't forget to give me the old thumbs up there by clicking on the like button and also ring that bell because that helps, well it obviously helps me because it gets another subscriber but it ensures that you're not going to miss out on any future reviews either. So that's it folks, until the next time and thanks once again and you know how it goes, stay safe and drink your whiskey the way you like it. Sancha. <coughs> Fuck me.